contemporary gentleman at the beginning of chapter 9. 1926. Our marriage. On the one side of the church, the rather elegant and choice individuals who had travelled to see May wed, her aunt Mariah Sheridan from Cavan, the one with a connection to Collins, encased in a brocaded day dress, giving her a slightly ironclad look, but very smart. May's other aunts from Roscommon, Cavan and Leitrim, glinting in the holy gloom of the chapel, with small dots of gold and ruby light playing on old rings and necklaces and bracelets. And chief before all, her resplendent brother, Jack, the doctor from Roscommon, lofty, silk-hatted, confident and silent. He was a man May adored, and he was said to adore her, even if he was a rare visitor, being devoted to fishing the rivers of Roscommon and shooting at the wildlife there. He was six foot six in his stockings, I knew, and in every way he was as impressive to me as her father had been, and I prayed he would approve of me. All of these souls sitting on their side with the easy rather solemn, occupying air that in other circumstances would have put me in suspicion that they were actually Protestants. On the other side, my side, my very dapper brother Tom, in his best suit, tailored by my father, of course, and no tailor in Dublin could have made a better one, even if it was a few years out of date, strictly speaking, but if he looked provincial, nevertheless, it was provincial with a touch of pleasing swagger about it. Then there was my father, old Tom, who had decided to retrieve a straw boater from some dark corner of his bedroom. And he had fashioned for himself a set of tails and black trousers to some degree let down by an old grey coat, an item he never attempted as a tailor and so was shop bought. He sat very still on the pew with his eyes closed so that he looked like one of those old photographs of executed train robbers in America, put out somewhere as a warning to the frontier populace. Beside him sat my mother, and something in the day had undone her intention somewhat, because it is probably true to say that her attire was not quite right. She wore her old cloth hat and her plain black severe little dress that, unlike Mariah Sheridan's, which was also severe, had not cost too much in the first place because my mother didn't care about such things. May herself, then, coming in on the arm of Nicholas Sheridan, Mariah's husband, in her wedding dress, a long brush mark of silk. Now I was beside May, staring forward at the priest. He spoke this, the question. Now I was beside May, staring forward at the priest. He spoke the question to me. And I answered him, I do, he fixing me with his eyes, keeping my eyes on his with a fierce effort, as if for a crazy moment I were marrying him. And then he put the same question to May, and there was a silence that begged to be filled with her voice, with her assenting, and yet there was nothing. I hardly dared look sideways at her. Now I was getting a little angry, angry at this bloody silence. You wouldn't treat a dog like that. A man in a wedding suit, tailored by his own father, with a fine little buttonhole. My mother's face, now in the furthest reach of my sight, whitened by fright, as perhaps my own was. I do, 